Hey, welcome back to Garden Rose. This is week four of my pantry challenge meals that I would like to share with you. Um, while I get going on tonight's dinner, I wanna just tell you a little bit about what's been going on this week so far. So I have an onion to chop. So I always see a lot of videos where people make their own broth, like veggie broth, chicken broth, beef broth, all of it. And I've always really wanted to do that, but felt like I needed a big chicken or, you know, beef bones to be able to do that. And that's kind of discouraged me so far, but I realized that, you know, every time I chop an onion, every time I chop veggies, every time I peel a carrot or peel a potato, I should be saving those things to make into a veggie broth if that's the only thing I can do right now. So I finally started a bag of scraps and so far it's only onion. So we're gonna have a very oniony broth eventually, but um, just a reminder out there, if you are like me and see people do all these cool things that you want to do and always forget to get started on it or save up all the things, here's your friendly reminder. It didn't take me long. I just had to get out a bag and put it in the freezer. So that's what I'm doing. I also started a bag for eggshells. I'm hoping that by the time I'm ready to plant tomatoes. Um, I'll have a good amount of eggshells saved up to use as a good source of... Eggshells are supposed to be good for tomatoes. I can't remember exactly why. I get to the point where I just like read so much about all these different gardening things and I can't remember exactly all of it. But I know the eggshells provide some kind of Something. Anyway, I'm saving them because it's better than just throwing them away or composting them when I can use them for something else. So that's what I've been doing, keeping that handy. Tonight I am making chili. So it's kind of a dump everything in a pot and hope for the best kind of chili night. I went grocery shopping this past weekend and this is day three of having more ingredients to work with, which is awesome. But actually this recipe, I'm not using anything that's new. So also still like a pantry challenge, pantry meal without new groceries. I have to be honest and say, I'm a little bit over beef right now. I feel like all of our protein has come from beef recently. And I really just wish I had chicken. Like chicken just sounds so good right now. I do have, um, so we got married September of 2022. So a year and some change ago. We had chicken marsala as our dinner at our wedding. And it was the best chicken marsala I have ever had in my life. And the chef, obviously because we bought all the food. It was like buffet style. The chef let us keep what was left. Um, my parents took it home and put it in food saver bags and sealed it up to put in the freezer. And we still have one packet of chicken marsala left in our freezer. I hesitate to use it because it's from our wedding and it's so special and I wish I could just keep it forever, but I'm getting really tempted to pull that out because it just sounds so good. Chicken in general sounds good and we've been eating a lot of beef but i'm making this chili meatless my whole story is for that reason we're making this meatless and i'm using beans and i also have a secret ingredient that i'm throwing in i'm gonna sneak it in without brad knowing and see if he notices um because i just don't want to eat meat tonight i'm just i'm not feeling it brad will hate that i'm in this mood because he thinks you have to have meat to feel full and have a good meal and I get it, you know, he he only eats like two meals a day because he has his lunch and then he comes home and has dinner. He wakes up very early so he doesn't eat right away. Um, so I get it that he wants to enjoy meat and his meals, but he might not even notice. 
It can be hard to come up with ideas though for meatless meals. So if you guys have any favorites that still have a lot of protein in them, still fill you up, but are meatless, I would love to hear them. And I truly do not know how these peppers have lasted so long. I got these before the new year. And I mean, they're looking a little wrinkly now, but they're made it to this chili. So I'm impressed. I'm putting these in. I just gave it a little taste. It's not like warmed all the way through yet. I just wanted to make sure my seasonings were okay. And it's really good. You cannot even taste the pumpkin. I will be very surprised if Brad actually knows that there's pumpkin in here. So, I mean, he'll find out when he watches this video. But other than that, I'm not telling him. That might've been a really good hack. That might've been a nice way to use up some pumpkin for some extra nutrition and I don't know. Sneaking vegetables in on your husband. <laughs> All right, well, that's dinner on this cold winter day. We have a nice warm cup of chili and I have something cool to show you. I made this. Well, my bread machine made this. I helped my bread machine make this. And at first, when we cut into it, it looked like it was a little bit raw right here in the middle, but I think I was just either seeing things or maybe I cut into it too early so it was still kind of soft around that area. But I mean, you know, it's still, I'm still figuring out how to use the bread machine. And I've just recently learned that you can like open it in the middle of its thing and like mess with the dough a little bit. You can take out the paddles so they don't lead to such a big mark in your bread. So I'm gonna do that next time, but we can have some bread and butter with our chili. So that's a good win. I'm very excited about that. 
I thought I was gonna have to use it for croutons, but I definitely don't have to. It's very good. Very good. So, there's dinner. I decided that my theme for this week's meals was going to be just because I'm doing a pantry challenge and eating out of my pantry doesn't mean that I have to have boring meals. So I finally decided to pull out that chicken marsala from our wedding and it felt like a little mini date night just to have this meal together and brought back memories of our wedding and we just really enjoyed the taste it was exactly the same it was perfect so in hand with the chicken marsala i thought it would be nice to make some risotto the risotto kind of has a backstory too because it's one of the first things that i learned how to make for brad when we were still living with my parents actually so i've been making risotto a handful of times throughout the last few years but it's always a favorite and i really enjoy the process of making it so you'll get to see how this all comes together, but just know that this meal was a very special one and I'm very happy to have had it for one of the nights throughout this pantry challenge. The next meal that I wanted to make this week was a rolled rump roast. So I've never made an oven baked roast. I've only ever thrown things into a crock pot and kind of set it up and forget about it until it was ready to eat. So with this rump roast, I wanted to be a little bit more intentional and more hands-on and really try my hand at roasting it in the oven. So I had to call my dad a few times and I hesitate to really even share this because it's not really a great tutorial of what to do with a rolled rump roast, but bear with me, this was my first time and it turned out pretty okay. But we made a rub out of salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, and oil. So I put that all over the roast and let that sit while we got started on caramelizing some onions that were going to go on top. And I was really happy to have my husband's help here because if I haven't mentioned it enough, I was feeling a little bit not confident about this recipe. So he helped me with searing the roast in our cast iron pan. So after putting the onions and garlic on top, this went into the oven at 450 for about 20 minutes. And then you'll see when that timer goes off and that 20 minutes is over, we bumped the temp down to 225 and let that roast for an hour. I think what I would do next time a little bit differently is let it go even longer. The recipe I was 
you know, following called to take it out when the internal temp reached about 125. Then after letting it sit for about 30 minutes, you would assume it could get up to 135. It did do that with the temperatures, but it was still pretty tough and the connective tissues didn't really melt away like I had hoped they would. And my dad's advice was to leave it in a little bit longer, but he said, hey, you know, final call's up to you, chef. And I definitely should have listened to my dad and left it in a little bit longer. The important thing is that the flavors were really great. It was juicy, it wasn't dried out. So that part tasted really great. I think we'll just try to cut it a little bit more thin and enjoy it as a sandwich with maybe some homemade bread, who knows? My final and probably favorite recipe from this week is making my own tortillas for fish tacos. So I've been thinking about making my own tortillas for a minute now, and Becky from Acre Homestead just shared a video on a couple different ways to make tortillas and which one she preferred. So check out her video if you want to see that um, more instructional video, but here I'm just kind of following her lead and using lard in, in my recipe. What was cool about this is that I've had some lard in my pantry left over from when we made pasties because you use lard for the pasty dough. So I haven't been too sure what to use that for because I'm not that familiar with using lard. So finding a recipe that I was able to use it in was really cool. It felt like a win under my belt and I was so excited to make my own tortillas. So I made up the dough and you'll see a little glimpse into my process as I get my little tortilla making station ready. Okay, so I have my workstation set up similar to how Becky had hers. So I've got here where I'm going to roll my tortillas, my griddle is heating up, and I have the towel at the very end where she kind of like put them in the towel afterwards so that the steam could continue to cook them and give them the nice chewy um, texture that, you know, they won't rip on you and stuff like that. So. This should make 16. are going to be pretty small, but all right, we'll see. As I was rolling them out, I noticed that they were quite tough. They didn't want to stay rolled out. They kind of wanted to spring back a little bit. So I found that what worked for my process was rolling them out for the first time, setting them aside, and then taking another stab at rolling them out even flatter. They still kind of sprung back a little bit once they hit the heat on the griddle. So they're not the biggest tortillas, and they're definitely not circles by any means, but they taste really good. So I don't care much about what they look like. They serve their purpose. And you'll see what I'm talking about when I make the taco and it looks amazing. I would consider this a win and it was so much easier than I thought it would be. So if you haven't made your own tortillas yet, definitely try it out because it feels very empowering. So there's my tortillas. When those were all done and cooling in the towel, I got started on breading my fish so that I could air fry that. And when that was all done, I assembled my tacos. 
I was also able to make a sort of faux tartar sauce by using a dill veggie dip that I had in the refrigerator. I just added some extra relish and some lemon juice to give it that kind of tang that tartar sauce has and it went with these fish tacos really well. Thanks for watching all of my meals this week. I feel like I was able to step it up a little bit even though they might not look the prettiest. This was a fun week for me and it got me out of my comfort zone a little bit. So keep those ideas coming in the comments. Thanks again for staying tuned with me so far. It has meant so much to get so many encouraging words and kind comments on these videos and I appreciate all the time that you take spending some time with me in my kitchen while I figure out how to best navigate my pantry and figure out how grocery shopping is going to look a little bit different for me. So if you haven't seen any of my previous videos, I did make a playlist with all of my pantry meals so far. So feel free to check that out. And just thanks again for being here. It, it really does mean a lot to me as I grow my small little channel. It's been really cool to see the growth and just get some new friends along the way. I'll continue to plan out some recipes for the upcoming weeks and see how long I can continue this pantry challenge even as we head into February because it's been so inspiring so far. So keep sending me those ideas and encouragement because I could use all of it. Thanks again and we will see you on the next one.